Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. If you're working on transistor amplifiers, sooner or later you will have to adjust their output stage. And the output stage usually has two adjustments, an offset adjustment and a bias adjustment. So in today's video I will show you what all these mean and how you can adjust them. So let's get started. In order to understand these adjustments we have to do some theory unfortunately. So here's what the power stage looks like for a class B amplifier. We have a top transistor right here which is an NPN, a bottom transistor here which is a PNP and let's imagine we have a sine wave at the input. Now if we apply this sort of sine wave at the input what happens here is that the top transistor conducts for the positive half cycle of the signal like so and the bottom transistor conducts for the negative half cycle. So that at the output we get something that approximates the input. So it, it will be more or less like a sine wave. And I'm saying more or less because this topology has a huge disadvantage that makes it basically unusable in audio applications. And that is crossover distortion. Now if you know a thing or two about bipolar transistors you probably know that they require a certain base to emitter voltage in order to conduct. For example, the top NPN transistor needs around 700 millivolts from base to emitter in order to conduct. Something similar happens for the bottom transistor, of course. This implies that in order to make this transistor conduct, the input has to be at least 700 millivolts. And similarly, if we want this bottom transistor to conduct, we need the input to be minus 700 millivolts or lower. And in between, none of these transistors conduct. So that means that for an input voltage that swings, let's say, higher than, than plus minus 700 millivolts, we will get some horrible distortion at the output, which looks something like this. So the output stays at zero until the input voltage exceeds around 700 millivolts. At that threshold, the top transistor will start conducting like this. Then below 700 millivolts, it will be in cutoff, so we get zero volts at the output and then the cycle repeats on the negative cycle as well. So we need a way to get rid of this crossover distortion. So in order to get rid of crossover distortion, what most amplifiers do is that they have some sort of voltage source between the bases and the emitters of these transistors, so that they apply a bias voltage to their bases which will keep them in conduction even without a signal at the input. And one way to do this, and maybe the most simple way to do this, is to use some diodes. Once again, if you know a thing or two about diodes, you probably know that they have a certain voltage drop on them when they are conducting, which is around 700 millivolts, which can sort of compensate for the voltage drop across the base emitter junction here. So making the same analysis as before, assuming that we have zero volts at the input, here, after the diode, we have around 700 millivolts, which is just enough to make this transistor conduct. And similarly, for zero volts at the input, here we have minus 700 millivolts, which makes the bottom transistor conduct as well. And now if we repeat the analysis, assuming that we have an arbitrary voltage here, here we have our input voltage V in plus 700 millivolts, and here we have our V in minus 700 millivolts which is once again the perfect condition for these transistors to conduct while also applying the input voltage to them. So this gets rid of crossover distortion. However, in reality this circuit is far from ideal. Now the issue with such a circuit is that it is almost impossible to match the voltage drop across the diodes with the voltage drop across the base emitter junctions. And that's because semiconductors are different so they won't necessarily have exactly the same voltage drop across them for the same current and also these two voltages vary a lot with temperature. As a matter of fact they vary so much with temperature that you can make a thermometer using a diode as a sensor. The larger the temperature the lower the voltage drop across the diode or the base emitter junction which is called CTAT in literature or complementary to absolute temperature. Now there are multiple ways to solve this issue as well one of them being that you need good thermal coupling between these two diodes and the power transistors. So as the power transistors heat up, you want to heat up these diodes too. Ideally at the same temperature and assuming that they have the same temperature coefficient, the voltages will cancel each other out and you would have a stable amplifier. However, an imbalance like this could also cause thermal runaway. Which basically means that an increase in current causes an increase in temperature and that increase in temperature causes an increase in current 
and so on until the transistors blow up. So this topology can be very thermally unstable if not adjusted properly or if not designed properly. That's why the bias current for an output stage is usually adjustable. So here's where the bias adjustment comes in. Now this is not drawn here, but what you can do is you can vary the current through these two diodes, which basically changes the voltage across them, which in turn changes the base currents, which causes some collector currents to flow all the time. And you usually can adjust the collector currents from zero to a reasonable value so that you get rid of crossover distortion. The only caveat here is that you need to wait for the transistors to heat up and you need to monitor the bias to make sure that the amplifier doesn't go into thermal runaway. So to do this, most of the time you adjust the trim pot that changes the current through these diodes and then you monitor the current through the transistors indirectly. You don't actually put an ammeter in here because that's a bit inconvenient. However, most amplifiers have some emitter resistors here and if you know their value and if you measure the voltage drop across them, you can simply derive the current using Ohm's law. So this is what we're going to do today. The next adjustment that we need to talk about is the offset adjustment. And in order to talk about this, we have to go deeper into how amplifiers usually work. This takes us to the schematic that we have right here. So here we have the class B output stage. And for simplicity, we are ignoring the bias diodes that we discussed earlier. Now, an amplifier like this is usually driven in a feedback loop using a differential pair. So here we have a differential pair using JFATs where we applied our input signal to one of the inputs of this differential amplifier and on the other input we applied the output voltage of the big amplifier, let's say, of the power amplifier. And in order to drive the power amplifier we use this output of the differential pair. And this creates a feedback loop. This means that this differential pair will do its best to keep this input and this input equal. Which means that it will do its best to make the output track the input. So with this in mind, let's see what offset is and where it comes from. Well, by definition, the offset is the output voltage of an amplifier when we have zero volts at the input. Ideally, of course, we would like this to be zero. However, it is impossible to get it down to zero in most cases. Let's see why that is. Apparently, in a topology like this one, the offset comes mostly from the mismatch of the input transistors. So it all boils down to the fact that real components are not ideal. We would like these two transistors to be perfectly identical. However, in practice, it's almost impossible to get them perfectly identical. So one way or another, we have to make the circuit tolerant for that. And to do this, we have the offset adjustment right here. So as you can see, instead of having two resistors here at the sources that go to ground, we have a trim pot that goes to ground. And this means that as we turn the pot one way, the resistance to ground for one transistor goes higher and the other one goes lower. And this way we can compensate for the different gate to source voltages that these two transistors might have. And this way we can trim the output for zero volts when we have zero volts at the input. Okay, enough theory for today, let's just do the adjustments. So the first step is to identify the adjustments. This is the power amplifier board and as you can see we have two trim pots here for each channel. The manual says that this is the offset adjustment and this is the bias adjustment. And it kind of makes sense because you can trace the wires a little bit. So look, the bias adjustment is close to some wires that go to the power transistors and the offset adjustment is close to this black component which is a matched JFET pair. So if you don't have the schematics they are pretty easy to figure out. And in order to measure the voltage across the resistor we have to identify the resistor which is this one. And this is a weird resistor actually because it's a 3 pin resistor, it's like a center tapped resistor or whatever you want to call it. So we are just measuring half of it between two of its terminals. That's why we have one probe here on the emitter of this transistor and one probe here on the common, which is the output of the amplifier basically. Now we can set the multimeter to millivolts DC, power up the amplifier and read the voltage. The manual says that you need to let the amplifier warm up for at least 3 minutes 
and then you should aim for 3.3 millivolts here which gives us a current of around 1 milliamp through the power transistors now as you can see this voltage is really unstable so I will leave the amp running for like an hour or so with the cover on to make sure that it reaches its final temperature before doing this adjustment but just to give you an idea you can see that you can adjust it from here so look we can take it all the way down to zero or something like that and then we can slowly increase it to our target of 3.3 millivolts now it looks good but as i said i would monitor it for an hour or so to make sure that it's not excessive and to make sure that the power transistors don't overheat because as you can see it's already drifting away so maybe we have to reduce it just a little bit and so on and now let's move on with the offset in order to adjust it we have to measure the output voltage the output that goes to the speaker normally and we are looking once again at DC millivolts in order to have the proper load for this amplifier I have a dummy load here because I don't want to ruin any speakers in case something goes wrong you can think of the dummy load as an 8 ohm power resistor basically and I of course have one of them for each channel so let's power up the amplifier and see what we get at the output once again I think it's a good idea to let it stabilize as you can see it starts with a pretty large offset and then the offset gets slower and lower let's give it some more time to settle and then I think we can adjust it okay let's assume that this is stable and now we can slowly adjust it and monitor the voltage let's see if we can get it to zero we are going the wrong way let's go the other way okay this is really touchy so it's hard to get it right anyway a few millivolts is acceptable so I would say this is good enough once again I think it would be ideal to monitor it for like an hour or so and in case you are wondering crossover distortion is usually easily observable using an oscilloscope however this is a really dangerous experiment and if you don't know what you're doing you can easily fry your amplifier or the oscilloscope and that's because some of the outputs of certain amplifiers are not referenced to ground and if you ground them using the oscilloscope that basically shorts out half of the output stage which can destroy your amplifier or the oscilloscope in my case the output is referenced to ground so we are safe anyway we have a signal generator connected at the input of this amplifier it provides 1 kilohertz at 1 volt peak to peak and we are looking at this at the speaker output using the oscilloscope okay the bias is all the way down to zero let's see if we can notice some crossover distortion well not really <laughs> apparently this amplifier works really well with zero bias this is weird but let's zoom in and I think we can see it okay increase the volume maybe and maybe you can barely see that we have a kink there so that line is not perfectly straight so let's increase the bias and see what happens I don't know if you can see it on video but I increased the bias just a little bit and now we get a straight line here the kink is gone so it really matters this is zero bias and this is with the bias however it's really subtle here okay so i hope this video managed to demystify just a little bit these topics of offset and bias adjustments for transistor amplifiers and if you did please give it a thumbs up and also if you're interested in more content related to electronics and programming please subscribe to this channel because there is more content like this on the way that's it for now bye